Welcome friends to my channel Stat Envy where we have started a lecture series on sample survey. This is the second part of the series and in the first part we have discussed about an overall idea for sampling. In this part we shall talk about representative sample and sample size. All of us know that a sample is a finite part of the population that means it is a finite subset of the population okay and uh, whatever information we get from the uh, sample we utilize it to make inference about the population so is it logical to draw any sample from the population and then make inference about the population based on the sample is it so no the answer is no we should select a sample from the population in such a way that it will have uh, almost each and every characteristic of the population within it okay so in this way only we can infer about the population based on the sample in a more valid way okay that's why the selection of sample should be done very carefully because we are going to generalize about the whole population based on the information of the sample okay that's why it should be done very carefully so which type of sample should we select from the population we should select a representative sample what is it a representative sample is a sample which contains almost each and every characteristic of the population within it so whenever we select a representative sample from the population then we can make inference about the population with more confidence and it will be a valid one okay but if we do not do it that means if we do not select a representative sample then what are the consequences of this we shall discuss this with the help of an example okay suppose for example we are conducting a study and in that study we want to know about the standard of living of our state okay and we know that a state is divided into various areas like posh areas urban areas rural areas and slum areas okay now if we select our sample only from the posh areas and urban areas then what will happen if we collect information only from the posh areas and urban areas then the number of rich people in our sample will be more okay because we know that the number of riches um, will be more in uh, posh areas and ur urban areas in compared to the rural areas and slum areas okay so if we collect such sample then if we calculate standard of living from this sample then we will get a very high standard of living okay that means we are getting a very high standard of living which is not a fact which is not true which is not true okay so here we are overestimating our standard of living okay which is not the fact and this sample is not a representative sample why because it is considering only the two areas the posh areas and urban areas is it is totally ignoring about the other two areas that is rural areas and slum areas okay that means it is not considering all the characteristic of the population that's why it is not a representative sample and you can now understand that what is the drawback of selecting such sample okay if we do not select a representative sample then then we may get uh, a overestimated result or sometimes we may get a underestimated result okay here suppose we are collecting information only from the rural areas and slum areas so in that case uh, we get a low standard of living okay if we calculate uh, standard of living from this sample then we will get a low standard of living because the number of uh, rich people in these two areas will be comparatively uh, lower uh, than these two areas okay so here uh, we are underestimating the standard of living of the state okay now if government is also interested in this study then what will happen so in the first case 
we are getting a overestimated result that means so we get a high standard of living okay so if the government observe that the state has a high standard of living in that case they are not supposed to implement any such scheme to improve the standard of living of the people because it is already high okay as a consequence what will happen the poorer section of the state will experience very low standard of living okay as they are not getting any such scheme to improve their quality of life okay as a result our whole state will experience more and more deteriorating standard of living without knowing about it isn't it so this is the worst impact of conducting such type of study and in this case what will happen the government has observed that uh, uh, the state has a very low standard of living so the government uh, supposed to make various uh, scheme uh, to improve the standard of living of the state okay as a consequence the other development of the state will be lagging behind okay so in both the cases we are facing issues because of the wrong selection of the sample okay so it should be taken care whenever we collect a sample from the population okay this is the representative sample why it is representative because this sample is collecting information from all the areas okay it collecting information from urban areas it collecting information from posh areas rural areas and slum areas okay so that's why it is a representative sample that means it is giving weightage to uh, all the areas of the population it contains all the characteristic of the population that's why it is a representative sample okay so you should not be confused with the term accessibility with this okay uh, in the previous two cases you may say that uh, uh, other two areas are not accessible to us that's why you are collecting information other two areas okay it is not the case it is uh, simply the case of biasness okay you are collecting information from your area of interest and to totally ignore about uh, the other areas it is not the case of accessibility it is a case of uh, biasness okay accessibility means that it may happen that in poor areas also uh, some objects are there or some part is there where he cannot go or uh, from home he cannot uh, collect uh, the information that means that uh, objects it uh, is uh, not accessible to you or so we so we should not uh, select uh, uh, sample from that type of uh, areas uh, from that type of uh, uh, places or uh, uh, objects okay so it will not come under our sampling frame and uh, i have already uh, mentioned in my previous uh, part that we should uh, select uh, our sample from the sampling frame because it is a, because it is a accessible part of the population okay and we should select a sample from the sampling frame which is the accessible part of the population but uh, it should not be confused with accessibility and bias so you should take care of all these thing and uh, now the question arises how we can select a representative sample so, so there are various sampling technique which will provide us a way to uh, select uh, a representative sample from the population and uh, we will discuss about the various sampling technique part by part okay so now i hope you understand what is representative sample what and uh, what is the importance uh, of uh, selecting a representative sample from the population now the next important question what is the sample size what sample size should we select for a um, study okay so um, population size is generally denoted by capital n and um, sample size is generally denoted by small n okay so if we select uh, a very small sample size in that case uh, we cannot uh, make inference about the population correctly because uh, our sample size is very small and the sample uh, doesn't have 
the uh, sufficient information for making inference about the population okay and uh, and uh, whatever inference we draw about the population based on the sample it will not be correct one and we have a very low confidence uh, for making inference as well as we have a very high chances of error that um, our inference uh, will be a valid one okay similarly uh, what will happen in case of large sample size if we select a very large sample size in that case we can draw uh, inference about the population with uh, much uh, higher confidence level and uh, there are less chances of error but the um, issue behind it is the uh, time factor and money factor okay because of these factors we prefer to use sampling in place of complete enumeration okay and so again if this factor are coming in sampling also then what is the advantage of doing sampling okay so we should take care of all this factor while decide about the sample size okay so now we have to decide uh, which one is important for us um, confidence level or the error okay so uh, obviously we want to maximize our confidence level and minimize our error okay we want a Mm, high confidence level and low uh, chance of error in our study okay so the standard confidence level are these that means 90% uh, confidence level with 10% error 95% confidence level with 5% error and 99% confidence level with 1% error so generally we go with this one we go with this one 95% confidence level associated with 5% error so we determine our sample size having confidence level 95% and 5% error so what does it mean if we determine such a sample size for our study uh, which have 95% confidence level and 5% error it means that if we conduct the same study for 100 number of times having the same sample size then we will get the same inference for 95 times and it may happen that other 5 times we may get other uh, inferences that means some variation may be there in the inferences okay what i am saying if we determine the sample size having 95 percent confidence level and 5 percent error then if we conduct the same study having the same sample size for 100 times then we will get the same inference for 95 times and it may happen that other five times we may get another inferences okay so this is the meaning of 95 percent confidence level and five percent error whenever we calculate sample size with this level and error okay so i am not giving any formula for determining sample size in this part because um, every sampling technique has uh, their own uh, formula for determining sample size i just uh, want to give you the concept uh, uh, for uh, determining sample size that means uh, why we are using 95 percent confidence level and five percent error what does the meaning of these two okay uh, and this is most important thing and uh, you must understand uh, what is the uh, meaning of this 95% uh, confidence level and 5% uh, error uh, we are determining the sample size with this thing okay so I hope you people understand the concept behind uh, determining sample size okay my motto in this video was to give you the information about representative sample that means uh, why should we select a representative sample what is the importance of selecting a representative sample and what is the concept behind determining a sample size with various confidence level and error what is the meaning of these confidence level and 
uh, associated errors okay so i hope you people understand and uh, if if i am able to make you understand about this then please like share and subscribe my channel and um, please make comment if there is any improvement in my presentation uh, then um, i shall make myself better in the next part okay so thank you thank you so much for watching my video thank you